I'm busy with this gentleman. Oh. Governor in, ma'am? No, he isn't, and I don't expect him either. I suppose he's driving up today. He may be, or he may not. I don't know, and what's more, I don't care. <laughs> Ask a blessing, Mr Stiggins, or your hot pineapple rum and water will get cold. For what we are about to receive in this house, make us truly thankful, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> ain't you gone yet, young man? I told you, Weller ain't here. I come to see you as well. How are you, mother in law? Why, I do believe he's a Weller. I rather think he is. And I hope this here reverend gentleman, as I takes to be the deputy shepherd I've heard so much on. <laughs> but excuse me saying, I wish I was the Weller as owns you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Get along with you. <laughs> For shame, young man. Ah, no offence, man. So you're very right, though. Take the right sort of thing when mother's in law is young and good looking, is it? Well, since you're here, you'd better have some tea. Pull a chair up. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> How's father? Oh. Oh. Uh, what's the matter with this here, gentlemen? He's shocked at the way your father goes on in. <gasps> oh, he is, is he? And with too good reason. Your father's a dreadful reprobate. A man of wrath. I'll trouble you for the toast, young man. What's, what's the old and been up to now? Oh, he has a hard art. Night after night does this excellent man. <coughs> Don't frown, Mr Stiggins, I will say it. Night after night does he come here and sit for hours together and it has not the least effect on him. Well, that is odd. It'd have a very considerable effect on me if I was in his place, I know that. <sighs> Another glass of pineapple rum, oh, Mr Stiggins. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> the fact is, my young friend, he has an obdurate bosom. Mm. Oh, my young friend, who else could have resisted the pleading of sixteen of our fairest sisters to subscribe to our noble society for providing the infant Negroes in the West Indies with flannel waistcoats and moral pocket handkerchiefs? Uh, what's a moral pocket handkerchief? An article which provides amusement with instruction, my young friend. Blending select tails with woodcuts. Oh, I know. Them as hangs up in the linen draper's shops with beggars petitions on them and all. So the governor wouldn't be persuaded by the ladies, wouldn't he? Sat and smoked his pipe and said the infant negroes were... What did he say they were? Little humbugs. Said the infant Negroes were little humbugs. Mm, well, um, well. A great many more iniquities of a similar nature might have been disclosed, only the toast being all eaten and the tea having got very weak, Mr Stiggins suddenly recollected a pressing appointment with the shepherd and took himself off accordingly. Mrs Weller had scarcely departed with the tea things when the London coach deposited Mr Weller Senior at the door, his legs deposited him at the bar, and his eyes showed him his son. Why, Sammy. Well, old knobs, how are you? Mother-in-law said you might be coming when I was taking tea with her. Oh, very glad to see you, Sammy. <laughs> the way you managed to get over your mother-in-law is a mystery to me. I only wish you'd write me out a receipt, that's all. Shh. She's just gone out the room. Ah, she ain't within hearing. She always goes and blows up for a couple of hours after tea, so uh, we'll just give ourselves a damp, Sammy. Uh, what'll you take, uh, brandy and water? I reckon I might have a pineapple rum and water. Oh, been here, red-nosed chap. Took tea here, and spirits. Yeah, amiable man, that there, Sammy. Oh, there's your grog, son. Very good hand at accounts. Is he now? Mm. Bought us 18 pence on Monday. Comes on Tuesday for a shilling to make it up to half a crown. Calls again on Wednesday for another half crown to make it five shilling. And goes on doubling till he gets it up to a five pound note in no time. They told me you wouldn't subscribe to the flannel whiskets. Yeah, what's the good of flannel whiskets to the young Negroes abroad? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what, Sammy. I come down very handsome to all straight biscuits for some people at home. It certainly seems a queer start to send out pocket handkerchiefs to people who don't know the use on them. Ah, they're always doing some gammon of that sort. Tough a Sunday I was walking up the road when who should I see her standing at the chapel door with a blue soup plate in her hand but your mother-in-law. <laughs> I wearily believed it was changed for a couple of sovereigns in it. And what do you think it was all for? 
The shepherd's water rate. The shepherd's water rate? Yeah. And if he ain't got enough out of him, Sammy, to make him free of the water company for life, I'm one Dutchman, you're another, and that's all about it. <laughs> and this here was only the deputy. Oh, well, he's as good as the full blown and Sammy, you take my word on it. Seems like it. I wish when you go, Sammy, you could muffle that air Stiggins and take him with you. I'm ashamed of you. What do you let him show his red nose in a Marcus a Granby at all for? Of course, I'm a married man, Samuel. And when you're a married man, you'll understand a good many things as you don't understand now. But whether it's worthwhile going through so much to learn so little, as the charity boy said when he got to the end of the alphabet, is a matter of taste. I rather think it hard. I've only got to say this here. If I was the proprietor of the Marcus of Granby and that here Stiggins came and made toast in my bar, I'd poison his rum and water. No. Would you, Sammy? Would you really, though? I would. I wouldn't be too hard on him at first. I'd drop him in the water butt and put the lid on. <laughs> but if I found he was insensible to kindness, I'd try the other persuasion. The elder Mr Weller bestowed a look of deep, unspeakable admiration on his son, and for the rest of the evening sat revolving in his mind the numerous reflections to which his advice had given rise. As brisk as bees, if not altogether as light as fairies, did the four Pickwickians assemble on the morning of the 22nd day of December in the year of grace in which these, their faithfully recorded adventures, were undertaken and accomplished. Christmas was close at hand. In all his bluff and hearty honesty, it was the season of hospitality, merriment and open-heartedness. Four outsides for Muggleton. Yes, yes. Pickwick, Tupman, yes. 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 and Winkle. Yes. That's great. Right. Yes. Oh, that's you, gentlemen. Yes. Uh, leave in five minutes, gentlemen. Better get on up. Ah. Uh, my servant is doing something in the boot. Uh, how, how are you, men? Oh, Sam. The codfish is a bit obstinate, sir. He oh. don't want to go in with the barrels of oysters. He's ah. a size, isn't he? Mm. Bit too big for his basket or my boot. Put him in head first. He won't go. Well, uh, tail first then. <laughs> he ain't going no oh, ways, yeah. neither top upward nor bottom upward nor sideways nor long ways. Oh, yes. Is it then? Well, oh. Sam, be careful. That fish and yours is our present for Mr. Wood. Take that, you codfish, you! <laughs> <laughs> He's done it, sir. Yes. He's in, sir. Up you get, sir. Uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, keep an eye on the boot, won't you? <laughs> I'll be right up behind, sir. All right, gentlemen. Yeah. 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 Here we go, boys. Mind yeah. you. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 yes. Oh. Oh. Through the city streets, the coach rumbles, and at length reaches the wide and open country. Now the wheels skim over the frosty ground and the horses, bursting into a canter at the smart crack of a whip, step along the road as if the load behind them, coach, passengers, codfish, oyster barrels and all, were but a feather at their heels. The bugle plays a lively air as the coach rattles through the ill-paved streets of a country town and Mr Winkle, who sits at the extreme edge with one leg dangling in the air, is nearly precipitated into the street as the coach twists round the sharp corner and turns into the marketplace. But before Mr Snodgrass, who sits next to him, has recovered from his alarm, they pull up at the inn yard where fresh horses with cloths on are already waiting. The coachman gets down to see the horses carefully put to and the outside passengers look with longing eyes and red noses at the bright fire in the inn bar. Oh. Tighten those buckles now! Everybody aboard! Take the cloth off now and away we go! Oh, but two of our party are missing! Oh, which gentlemen may they be? The two stout gentlemen! They would get down, though I told them there wouldn't be time! Oh, we can't keep the whole coach waiting just for the two of them! Mr. Pickwick! Pickwick! Pickwick. We're going without you two, sir! Move, move, for heaven's sake, Mr. Pickwick, sir! Pickwick Tubman! Wait! Wait! Wait for us! Now then, gentlemen! 
Oh, but we, we, we thought there would be time for just one glass. Oh, as indeed there would have been. But my fingers were so cold that it took me a full five minutes to find the sixpence to pay for the ale. Yes, yes, well, that's as may be. Now, uh, a ball, sir. Oh, oh. At this rate, they'll never arrive. Brandy and water before oh. we start another table. How many more delays are we to have? All right. Oh, 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 stop breathing upon me, sir. Such was the progress of Mr Pickwick and his friends by the Muggleton Telegraph on their way to Dingley Dale. And at three o'clock in the afternoon, they all stood high and dry, safe and sound, and hale and hearty upon the steps of the Blue Lion, having taken on the road quite enough of ale and brandy to enable them to bid defiance to the frost that was binding up the earth in its iron fetters and weaving its beautiful network upon the trees and hedges. Now, have you all the luggage, sir? All present and correct, sir. One cob, fish and six barrels of oysters, not counting the baggage. The point is now, so how do we get this here little lot up the Dingley Dell? Isn't well, this Mr Wharton's boy coming out of the tap room? Bless my soul, so it is. It's Joe! Well, Joe, how are you? You look rosy enough, my young friend. Oh, I've been asleep in front of the tap room floor. Oh, Master oh, sent oh, me oh, over oh. with the shade cart to carry a luggage up to the house. Oh. He'd have sensed the sound of horses, but he thought you'd rather walk being oh. a cold day. Yes, 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 we would rather walk. Oh, Sam, yes. sir, uh, help Mr Wardle's servant put the luggage in the cart and then ride with him. We'll walk forward at once. Come along. Oh. Where are you going, sir? Here, sling these portmanteau, young dropsy. Hey, damn me if he ain't gone to sleep standing up. No, I ain't. What's in them barrels? Eat the bowls? Well, it ain't coals, that's a sure thing. Stow them up behind. Mind that codfish. I like eating, I do. It has crossed my mind, as you might. You're a nice specimen of a prize boy. You are, young 20 stone. Oh, thank you, sir. You haven't got nothing on your mind as makes you fret yourself, have you? Not as I know, huh? I should rather have thought to look at you that you was a labouring under some unrequited attachment to some young woman. No, I ain't. I'm glad to hear it. Well, all's ready now. Up with you. Can you drive? I should think so, rather. Why? Right, you take the reins then. It's straight as you go. You can't miss it. Hey, what are you laying yourself down for? That here codfish ain't a pillar. Oh, damn me if he ain't gone sound asleep. And of all the cool boys I ever set my eyes on, this here young gentleman is the coolest. Oh, well, straight ahead, he said. Ah, yes. Just down this lane, as I remember, then across the field and... Why, bless my soul! Pickwick! Wardle, my dear friend! Ah, I thought we'd come to meet you. Ah, we call as great a sportsman as ever, I'll be bound. Oh, Chapman, oh, 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 and Snodgrass. Now, you all know me, daughter Emily. Oh, yes, indeed. How are you, Miss Wardle? Oh, how nice to see you again, Mr. Snodgrass. And here's Bella and Trundle hanging ah. at the back together. I tell them they'll be roped together soon enough, but it makes no difference. Oh. Isabella, my dear. My felicitations to you. you uh, Trundle, my boy, you've picked a treasure. Thank you, Mr. Pickwick. I only hope to deserve her. Now, here's a young lady none of you knows. Special friend of Emily's and come down to be one of Bella's bridesmaids, Miss Arabella Allen. Oh, uh, Miss Allen. Now, come now. It's too, too cold to stand about. You can get acquainted indoors. Now, if we take this cut across the stile, we'll be back at the house in five minutes. Oh. Winkle, Snodgrass, mm. help the young ladies over. Oh, with pleasure, uh, Miss Allen. Allow me to assist you. If you would take my hand, Miss Emily. It is worthy of remark that Mr. Snodgrass offered Miss Emily far more assistance than the absolute terrors of the style would seem to require, while Miss Arabella Allen, a black-eyed young lady with a very nice pair of boots with fur round the top, was observed to scream very loudly as Mr. Winkle helped her over. 
My mother's greatly looking forward to your visit, Pickwick. And I'm sorry for your sake, Tupman, that my sister's not with us. But as I said once before, she's a, she's a fool oh. and you'll do better without her. It's a very hard on a woman of great sensibility to be deceived by such a conscienceless scoundrel. Yes, but I, I hope the experience will stand her in good stead. She may not always have you, my dear Pickwick, to rescue oh. her. <laughs> ah, your daughter and Mr. Trundle look very happy together. I couldn't wish her a better man. Mm. There have been some comings and goings in preparation for the wedding these last few weeks, I can tell you. I can <laughs> think of no more appropriate time for a wedding than Christmas. The season, peace and goodwill towards all men, the atmosphere of rejoicing, all are conducive to it. Oh, 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 here oh, we are. Oh, oh, uh, indoors with you all. Quickly, who oh, went oh, in the cold in? Oh, down, my lass is down. Oh, oh, they remember you, Pickwick. Damned if they did. Emma, take the hats and coats. Yes, now, my mother's in the parlour. We've a few other people coming tomorrow. Relations, you know, who might have a poor time on their own. Uh, now, mother. Uh, yeah, you remember Mr. Pickwick, don't you? Eh? Hey? Uh, Mr. Pickwick, mother. Never mind. Don't trouble Mr. Pickwick about an old creature like me. Nobody cares about me now, and it's very natural I uh, shouldn't. Come, come, Mrs. Wardle. I can't let you cut an old friend in this way. I've come down expressly to have a long talk with you and another rubber of whist. And you and I will show these boys and girls how to dance a minuet before they're eight and forty hours older. <laughs> What's he saying? I can't hear uh, him. Uh, she's a, a little bit cross today, but she'll come round. And our mother, don't be cross. Uh, Recollect, Bella, you must keep her spirits up, poor girl. Oh, never see her no more. I'll be bound. Oh, oh grandmother, oh. we shall come and see you off. Yes, indeed. Truly, we will, so be happy for you. Now then, a glass of hot elder oh, wine uh, to take the children oh, out of your bed. Uh, we shall be quiet tonight, but tomorrow evening, after the wedding, we'll have a dance and make merry. Uh, Winkle, Snodgrass, hand these to the young ladies. Yes. Oh, Miss Wardle? Oh, thank you, Mr. Snodgrass. Uh, Miss Allen? Thank you, Mr. Winkle. Come in. Morning, sir. Ah, oh, sir. Thought you'd like your shaving water a bit early this morning, sir. What? God bless my soul, yes, of course. It's the morning of the wedding. You can hear, sir. Everybody's in a regular yeah. fever. All the female servants is in brand new uniforms, pink muslin, white bows in their caps, and they say even the old lady. Oh, Sam. A big pardon, sir. Old Mrs. Wardle has brung out a brocaded gown which ain't seen the light for 20 years. Oh. If it goes on like this, I reckon we'll have to get a ticket for a seat in the church. Ah, uh, Mr. Wardle is a very fine man, sir. I only knows one better, sir. Lay out the black coat, sir. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, and the fawn pantaloons. Then, when I'm dressed, go and see if you can help any of the others. Yes, sir. A wedding is a licensed subject to joke upon. But there really is no great joke in the matter, after all. We speak merely of the ceremony, and beg it to be distinctly understood that we indulge in no hidden sarcasm upon a married life. Let us briefly say, then, that the ceremony was performed by the old clergyman in the parish church of Dingley Dell, and that Mr Pickwick's name is attached to the register, that the young lady with the black eyes signed her name in a very unsteady and tremulous manner, that Emily's signature, as the other bridesmaid, was nearly illegible, that the young ladies generally thought it far less shocking than they had expected, and that although the owner of the black eyes and the arch smile informed Mr Winkle that she was sure she could never submit to anything so dreadful, we have the very best reasons for thinking she was mistaken. Then the old church bell rang as gaily as it could, and they all returned to breakfast. Hey, where does the mince pies go, young opium eater? Oh, at the middle of the table, both sides of the cake. Very good. Stick a bit of Christmas in them. There. Now we look compact and comfortable, as the farmer said when he cut off his little boy's head to cure him of squinting. <sighs> Here, don't you go falling asleep now. Is the company coming? Yeah, be quick, be quick. I know my mother would like you to sit by her. I should be older. Uh, allow me to assist you at your chair now. Winkle, Snodgrass, if you would be kind enough to look after the two bridesmaids. Yes, 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 indeed. Oh, and uh, Tupman, uh, there's a chair for you over there. Oh, oh, thank you. Trundle, Bella, yes, each side of me. 
I must keep you both near me for as long as I can. <laughs> Dear Mr. Pickwick, this beautiful watch and chain. I shall think of you every time oh. I look at it. Oh, I hope no. you'll visit us, Mr. Pickwick, when oh. we're settled in our new home. Indeed yes. I will, Trundle, my boy. <laughs> Joe! Yes. Oh, damn the boy, he's asleep again. Oh, oh. I ain't, sir, I'm eating. Ah, oh, well, pour out the wine. Uh, 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 help him, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Wardle, my dear friend, if I might say a few words on this auspicious occasion. Of course, of course. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Area, uh, area, sad, area. Sad. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, call all the servants in. Oh. Uh, Joe, yes, fill the glasses meanwhile. Yes, sir. I could kiss that dear Mr. Pickwick. Oh, uh, couldn't it be done by deputy, Miss Allen? <laughs> Get away with you, Mr. Winkle. <laughs> I declare I'm almost afraid to sit by you. Oh, no. All here, sir. Oh, oh good. Thank you, sir. Now proceed, Pickwick. Uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> no, no, I, I won't say that. I'll call you my friends. My... Dear friends, oh. if the ladies will allow me to take so great a liberty. Oh, <laughs> I am going to propose the health of the bride and bridegroom. Oh. My young friend Trundle, I believe to be an excellent and manly fellow. His wife, I know to be an amiable and lovely girl, oh, well qualified to transfer to another sphere of action the happiness which... For 20 years, she has diffused around her in her father's house. <laughs> oh. I always loved her. John, you love a fat I wish, I wish I was young enough to be her sister's husband. Shame. <laughs> Perhaps Mr. Snodgrass. But failing that, failing that, I am happy that I am old enough to be her father. For, being so, I shall not be suspected of any latent designs when I say I admire, esteem, and love them both. Oh. So let us drink their healths and wish them prolonged life and every blessing. The bride and groom. The bride and groom. The wedding breakfast concluded, the party met again at dinner. After a 25-mile walk undertaken by the males, at Wardle's recommendation, to get rid of the effects of the wine at breakfast. The dinner was as hearty an affair as the breakfast, and quite as noisy, without the tears. Then came the dessert, and some more toasts, then came the tea and coffee, and then the ball. I positively claim this first dance, Miss Allen. You're very peremptory, Mr Winkle. And if I should refuse... I shall cut my throat. You prevail upon me, Mr Winkle. I couldn't possibly let you cut your throat at Christmas. Oh, uh, Miss Allen. <laughs> your friend, Mr Snodgrass, seems very taken with Emily. But then, of course, she's so very pretty, don't you think? Well, I, uh, I don't know. You don't know, Mr Winkle? I have eyes for only, for only one female in this room, and, oh, you know who she is? Do I? Well, let me think. Can I meet the young lady over there in the corner? I'll go over and tell her. <laughs> oh, Miss Allen. Now, Tupman, my friend, no melancholy. We'll find you a nice young lady to dance with. Come, let me introduce you to... Whoa, 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 wait a moment. Look, look at Pickwick. He's just come in. Upon my soul. If he hasn't taken off his gaiters and put on pumps and silk stockings. I never knew he possessed such things. <laughs> well, my dear friend, when does the ball begin? I'm ready. Ah, be quick. You mean to dance? Indeed I do. Don't you see I'm dressed for the purpose? <laughs> but you in silk stockings. <laughs> and why not? Oh, why not? Oh, well, well, of course, there, there's no reason why you shouldn't wear them. I imagine not, sir. I imagine not. Can you think of a reason? No, sir. No. Oh, no, 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 of course not. They're, um, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're a very pretty pattern. I hope they are. You see nothing extraordinary in the stockings? As stockings, no. I trust. Uh, sir. Uh, certainly not. Oh, 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 no, most certainly not. I'm very glad to hear it, sir. We are all ready, I believe, Mr. Wardle. Now, everybody, take your partners for Sir Roger de Clamely. Oh, yes. Miss Emily, will you favour me? With pleasure, Mr. Snodgrass. Mrs. Wardle, will you do 
threw me the other. Why, Mr. Pickwick, you don't want to bother with an old woman like me? No, no, I, I insist, ma'am, that the head of such a fine old family, looking herself so well and bonny, shall lead off the dance out. Come along. This is... Two people missing. Stop! Stop. Where's Stop. Winkle? Oh, where's Winkle? Winkle! Winkle! Oh, Winkle! Oh, here we are. Oh, oh, were you waiting for us? Really, Winkle. It's quite extraordinary that you couldn't have taken your place before. <laughs> Not at all extraordinary. <laughs> well, oh, well, well, perhaps it wasn't so extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> now, everybody ready? Strike up! Oh, yes, I really Your family has games in the kitchen tonight, Emma, my dear, has they? Oh, yes, Mr. Weller, we always have on Christmas Eve. Master would neglect to keep it up on any account. He put up that great bunch of mistletoe with his own hands. Oh, I never see such a sensible sort of man as he is, or such a regular gentleman. And don't he breathe nice pork? Oh, you've woken up, have you? <sighs> is it time for supper, Emma? Joe, if you eat anything more, you'll burst. I'll tell you what, young boa constrictor. If you don't sleep a little less and exercise a little more, when you comes to be a man, you'll lay yourself open to the same sort of personal inconvenience as was afflicted to the old gentleman as wore the pigtail. What did they do to him? He was one of the largest patterns as was ever turned out. Regular fat man, as hadn't caught a glimpse of his own shoes for 25 years. If you'd put an exact model of his own legs on the dining table before him, he wouldn't have known them. Let that be a lesson to you, Joe. Ah, but that way no. He always walked to his office with a very handsome gold watch and chain stretched across his middle. Regular tight fit it was. There weren't a pickpocket in all London as didn't take a pull at it. But the chain had never break and the watch had never come out. So they soon got tired of dragging such an heavy old gentleman along the pavement until at last, one day, the old gentleman sees a pickpocket as he knows by sight coming up arm in arm with a little boy with a very large head. They're going to have another try says the old gentleman, but it won't do, and he begins a chuckling wary hearty, when all of a sudden, the little boy rushes head foremost straight into the old gentleman's stomach and doubles him right up with a pain. Oh, no! Fat, my dear, Murder, says the old gentleman a gasping, and when he comes straight again, the watch and chain was gone. And what's worse than that, the old gentleman's digestion was all wrong ever afterwards to the very last day of his life. Yeah. So you just look about you, young fella, and take care you don't get too fat. Master's coming with the company, Joe Stander. Now, no ceremony, my friends. We are all united in the kitchen this evening for supper and games. This is Liberty oh. Hall tonight. Oh, Mr. Weller, look at your master. He's leaving mistress into the mistletoe. <laughs> Mrs. Water, ma'am, allow me to seal this happy day. Oh, <laughs> bless you, he don't set a good example. Come on, Emma, my dear. Bravo! Under the mistletoe, everybody. Oh, uh, Miss Allen, you're under the mistletoe. Let me too, Mr. Winkle. How dare you? Miss Emily, <laughs> it is Christmas, you know. Oh. <laughs> Emily, I'm going to kiss that dear Mr. Pickwick. Oh, 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 you go. Can't I, though? He's standing right under the mistletoe. Oh. Come on, follow me. <laughs> What? Oh. Oh. There you are, you old duck. Oh. God bless my soul. It was a... My dear young lady, Miss Emily. God bless my soul. Oh, how very blessed. Hey, well, 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 well. Oh, good man, Pickwick. <laughs> when everybody had been kissed and the screaming had subsided and faces were in a glow and curls in a tangle, there came the good old English games. Blind man's buff which Mr Pickwick played with the utmost relish. Then a great game of snapdragon, and when fingers enough were burned by that and all the raisins gone, 
they sat down to a substantial supper and a mighty bowl of wassail, something smaller than an ordinary washhouse copper, in which the hot apples were hissing and bubbling with a rich look and a jolly sound that were perfectly irresistible. Ah, this, my dear friend, is comfort indeed. Ah, invariable custom. Everybody sits down with us on Christmas Eve, and here we wait until the clock strikes twelve to usher Christmas in. Now, who will give us a Christmas song? Who? You, Papa? No, oh, no, no, I have no voice. Tuppence the man for the music. Well, I, I do have a song for Christmas, which I'll happily play. Uh, uh, Snodgrass provided the words. Oh, did you write them, Mr. Snodgrass? Uh, well, not exactly. Well, go and see it. <laughs> we have been practicing it. Indeed, we have. <laughs> no more delay. Let's get on with it. I care not for spring on his fickle wing. Let the blossoms and buds be born. He woos them amain with his treacherous rain, and he scatters them ever morn. An inconstant elf, he knows not himself, nor his own changing mind an arm. He'll smile in your face, and with wry grimace, he'll wither your youngest flower. He'll wither your youngest flower. <laughs> My verse. Let the summer sun to his bright home run. He shall never be sought by me. When he's dimmed by a cloud, I can laugh aloud and care not how sulky he be. For his darling child is the madness wild that sports in fierce fever's train. And when love is too strong, it don't last long, as many have found their pain, as many have found their pain. A mild harvest night by the tranquil light of the modest and gentle moon has a far sweeter sheen for me, I ween and the broad and unblushing noon. But every leaf awakens my grief as it lieth beneath the tree. So let autumn air be never so fair, it by no means agrees with me. It by no means agrees with me. But my song I call out for Christmas stout, the heart in the true and the bold. A bumper I drain, and with my and main give three cheers for this Christmas mood. Will I him in with a merry din that shall gladden his joyous heart? And we'll keep him up while there's fight or sup. And in fellowship good will part. When fellowship good will part. Oh yes, oh yes. In his fine honest pride, he scorns to hide one jot of his heart where the stars. There's no disgrace, but as much the same trace on the cheeks of our bravest stars. Then again I sing. Till the roof doth ring, and it echoes from wall to wall. To the sound of white, fair welcome tonight, as the king of the seasons all. As the king of the seasons all. Oh, a splendid song, my friend. No, if only my sister could have heard it. A tub of Miss Rachel. <laughs> oh, I say it's snowing. Ha! Oh. Do you see? Upon my word, it's thick. Ah, it will be a white Christmas, and what better? Are your glasses full? Yes. 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 Ah, listen. Midnight. It's Christmas Day, everybody. I give you a toast, my friends, to Christmas. To, to Christmas. Christmas.
<laughs> well, uh, Morning, sir. Fun, uh, oh, uh, well, so. Merry Christmas, sir. Oh, oh, yeah. and, uh, Merry Christmas to you, Sam. What an excellent evening last night, huh? I seem to remember that I danced a lot. That you did, sir. A very great deal of exercise was taken last night, sir. Yes, and what, what a lot of excellent fellows Warden knows. I seem to remember that I invited a number of them to dine at the George and Vulture when they were there. Next came to London. It was a number, sir. About five and forty, as I recollect. Five and... <clears throat> As uh, uh, still frosty air. Eh? A so, fine weather for them as he's all wrapped up, sir, as the polar bear said when he was practising his skating. Will there be anything uh, more, sir? Uh, well, uh, no, no. Get your breakfast. I shall be down in a quarter of an hour. You'll find there's new company arrived, sir. There's a couple of sawbones downstairs. A couple of what? Sawbones, sir. Well, don't you know what a sawbones is, sir? I thought everybody knows that a sawbones was a surgeon. Oh, oh, a surgeon, eh? I, I, I must make a note of that. Only these two ones surgeon. here below ain't regular thoroughbred sawbones. They're only in training. Ah, in other words, they're medical students. That's right, but sir. I'm glad of it. They're fine fellows with judgments matured by observation and reflection. Tastes refined by reading and study. I am very glad of it. They're a smoking cigars by the kitchen fire. Uh, no, no, <laughs> overflowing with kindly feelings and animal spirit. Just what I'd like to see. And one of them has got his legs on the table and he's drinking brandy neat, while the other one, him in the barnacles, the he's... What, Sam? Spectacles, sir. He's got a barrel of oysters between his knees, which is opening like steam, and as fast as he eats them, he's taking aim with the shells at young Dropsy, what's sitting fast asleep in the chimney corner. Oh, the eccentricities of genius, Sam. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Only their eccentricities don't seem to extend to washing, sir. Both on them has got a sort of mildewy appearance flavoured with tobacco. That is enough, Sam. You may retire. Yes, sir. Ah, here he is at last. Uh. A Pickwick, oh, my dear fellow. I want you to meet Miss Allen's brother, Mr. Benjamin Allen. Mm. Mr. Uh. Pickwick, Ben. How do you do, sir? Not bad. Not bad at all, considering last night, eh, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this gentleman is his very particular friend. Bob Sawyer, sir, at oh. your service. Call him and guys any time and I'll be delighted to oblige. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are the others? Uh, my friends, I mean. They've gone for an early walk with the girls. Oh. They'll be back directly, so don't wait for them. Those kidneys over there, Bob? Mm, ah. Yes, I'm going to pass them, will you, Pickwick? Yeah, yeah, Excellent yeah. things, kidneys. Oh, yes, <laughs> indeed. Especially when they ain't got no stones in them, eh, Ben? <laughs> Nor when they ain't enlarged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, are you having that roast fowl, Pickwick? Mm. I prefer the beef. Uh, pass them oh. across, then. Mm. Well, thanks. Mm. Nothing like dissecting to give one an appetite. Mm. Is that what you gentlemen have been doing lately? Mm. Cutting up a corpse. Oh. By the by, Bob, mm -hmm. have you finished that leg yet? Nearly! It's a very muscular one for a child. Must have run about the streets a lot before it got run over. I've put my name down oh. for an arm at our place. We're clubbing for a subject and the list is nearly full. Only we can't get hold of any fellow that wants a head. Oh. I wish you'd take it. No, can't afford expensive oh. luxuries. I wouldn't mind oh. a brain, yeah. but I can't run to a home. Oh, yeah. no, I, I should, when I can hear the lady. Oh, 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 you should have been with us. Oh, oh I, I did look up. Why, Ben. Morning, Arabella. Morning, Miss Warlock. Good morning, Mr. Allen. Mr. Sawyer, when did you get here? This morning. Come to take you home tomorrow. Oh, so soon? <laughs> Must you indeed go so soon, Miss Allen? Well, I... And now then, Arabella, don't you see Bob Sawyer? You ain't said a word to him. How are you, Mr. Sawyer? All the better for seeing you, Miss Allen. Oh, what a cold little hand. Squeezes and warm is, eh? I'm not <laughs> cold, thank you, Mr. Sawyer. Um, this is Mr. Tupman. Uh, servant, sir. Uh, Mr. Snodgrass. Uh, gentlemen. And that other gentleman beside you. Do I know him? Oh, uh, haven't you been introduced to Mr. Winkle? I have not, but I shall be very happy to, Arabella. 
Mr. Winkle, my brother, Mr. Benjamin Allen. Oh, uh, how do you do, sir? I do very well, sir. Oh, he... This, as you may have heard, is Mr. Bob Sawyer, a very particular friend of my family and of my sister, sir. Ben... No, no, that's enough. Now, you must all be famished. Fall to all of you. I can recommend the ham and the beef. Pass them along, if you quick. Uh, are you a very great friend of Mr. Bob Sawyer's, Miss Allen? No, Mr. Winkle, I'm not. I don't like him at all. Oh, I'm so very glad. What's that you and my sister are whispering about, Mr. Winkle? Oh, uh, I was remarking what an interesting profession yours and Mr. Sawyer's must be. Interesting? I should say so, eh, Bob? Remember that old cove that came into the hospital last month? Oh, that was a lark, wasn't it? Oh, queerest thing I ever saw. Oh, uh, what was that? <laughs> well, there was this old gentleman with a lump sticking out of his head as big as an egg. Bigger? No, no, Ben, not bigger. Big as a duck's egg, then? Yes, big as a duck's egg, I grant you. Well, the way old Philgrave, uh, he's head surgeon at Guy's, took it away, clean as a whistle. Here, I'll show you. Uh, give me that loaf, Ben, and the oyster knife. Oh, I now. really think so that the ladies might... Nonsense! Arabella's heard me talk like this a hundred times. Uh. Could do an operation yourself, couldn't you, Arabella? Well, they stretched out the old gentleman on the table, and crack goes Philgrave with the hammer and chisel. Oh. Hammer and, uh, and chisel. Can't oh. chip round your skull without him, sir. God bless my soul. Round the egg, he goes as neat as a carpenter making a keyhole. Assistant takes chips away, slash goes Phil Grave with a knife, uh. away comes egg as clean as a whistle. Snip, snip goes Phil Grave, sewing the place up with a bit of overstitching, and the old gentleman walks away as right as a trivet, carrying the parcel of tripe and onions that he brought in with him for his dinner. Uh. Remarkable. Quite remarkable. Oh, Pickwick, I'll make a note of that. Uh, I'll tell you a hundred things like that. There was another instance that I remember. Uh, 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 another, another time, Bob. Now, when everybody's finished, what do you say to an hour or two on the ice? Oh. We've plenty of time before church. Capital. Right. The pond's in fine condition, so I'm told. I'll give orders for a brazier to be lit so we'll have hot roast chestnuts. Oh, you. you skate, of course, Winkle. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I, I am rather out of practice, of course. Oh, oh, do skate, Mr. Winkle. I like to see it so much. It's so graceful and elegant. So swan-like. I, I should be very happy, I'm sure, but I have no skates here. Oh, we've half a dozen pairs upstairs, I know. We'll soon fit you up. Oh. Uh, now, hats and coats on, then. We can be there in ten minutes. Uh, uh, do, do you skate, Pickwick? Oh, not since I was a boy. I shall be content to uh, stand and watch you all. Oh, shame on you, sir. Oh. <laughs> <Surely>. <laughs> Come and stand over here by the brazier, sir. You'll catch your death if you stand on the edge of the ice. Yes, come and keep us company, dear Mr. Pickwick. Yes, do. Oh, thank you, my dear. Oh, what's the matter? Rather chilly if you're not skating. Oh, how remarkably good your brother and Mr. Sawyer are. What, what is that they're executing now? It's called a figure of eight. Oh, do look. Papa's joining them now. They're going to do a reel. Really? I had no idea that such convolutions could be performed. Why doesn't Mr. Winkle join them? I'm so looking forward to seeing him perform. Maybe he appears to have some <laughs> difficulty putting on his skates. Uh, Sam, go and see if you can help him. Very good, sir. It's no good, Winkle. I just can't get them to stay on. Well, you needn't try too hard, Snodgrass. I, I, I don't really mind if I don't skate. Oh, but Governor sent me over to ask if there was anything I could do, gentlemen. But it's these skates, Sam. They won't stay on. You were trying to put them on backwards, sir. Points to the front, like this, see? Oh, yes, of course. Now, you screw up that one, sir, and I'll do each other. Right. Have you on the ice in two shakes of a lamb's tail, sir? Oh, Come thank you, Sam. Come along, Winkle. I'm keeping you <laughs> Ready in a second, sir. Screwed yours tight, Mr. Snodgrass, sir. Yes, I think so, Sam. Right. There you are, sir. Up with you. Uh, Steady now. Oh dear. Uh, Off with you, sir, and show him how to do it. No, no, no. Wait a minute, Sam. Sam, Sam. Don't let me go yet. I, uh, how slippery it is, Sam. It's... Not an uncommon thing on ice, sir. No! Oh! Uh, hold up, sir. <laughs> Feet on the ice, not in the air. <laughs> these, are, these are very awkward skates, aren't they, Sam? You... I'm afraid there's an awkward gentleman on him, sir. No, we could come along. The ladies are all anxiety. <laughs> Just to get a begin, sir. Now, sir, start off. No, 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 stop, stop. Stop an instant, Sam. Sam, Sam, yes. Sam. Sam, I find I've got a couple of coats at home that I don't want, Sam. You may have them, oh, Sam. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> no, 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 never mind touching your hat, Sam. You needn't take your wear hand and do that. I, I, I meant to have given you five shillings this morning for a Christmas box, Sam. I, 
I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you this afternoon, Sam. You're very good, sir. Oh, and just hold me a first, Sam. I, I shall soon get in the way of it. Now, 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 not too far, Sam. Not too far. Try and straighten up, sir, and just put one foot in front of the other. Well, that's what I am doing, only they'll slip. Then slide, sir, and don't walk. Sam! Sir! Come here, I want you. I'll have to go, sir. The governor's calling. Oh, no, Sam. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, just a little longer. I've got to go, sir. I'll just give you a push off. No, Sam, no, you're not. Oh, oh, put that devil! Oh. We'll oh. call for heaven's oh. sake. Oh. 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 I do beg your pardon. I, I'm rather out of practice. You're all right, Bob. Of course I'm all right, clumsy devil. It was the skates. Are you hurt? Oh, no, not much. Well, up with you now. Steady now. We'll oh, help oh, you to the edge. Oh, careful, man. Don't fall over again. I wish you'd let me bleed you. No, thank you. I really think you'd better. Uh, what do you think, Mr Pickwick? Take his skates off. Oh, no, 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 no. Really? Uh, I'd Take scarcely his begun. Take skates off, Sam. Yes, sir. Uh, you'd better sit down, sir, before you fall down. I'm only a little out of practice. Uh, you have alarmed the lady, sir, and might have caused someone a serious injury. Have you done, sir? Second ones are coming off now, sir. Uh, but, uh, help him up. Uh, oh. uh, there we are, sir. Now, we can... Follow me, if you please. Over here, I do not wish to be overheard. This will do. Mr. Winkler, sir, you are a humbug. Uh, a what? A humbug, sir. I will speak plainer if you wish it. An imposter, sir. Oh, Pickwick, I... Uh, this I, is all I have to say, sir. I leave you to meditate upon my words. Mr. Winkle? Oh, Miss Allen. Don't stay here all alone. Come and watch the others with me. Oh, Miss Allen. You did skim so beautifully over the ice before you fell. It was a picture to watch. I'd, I'd have been all right if I weren't so out of practice. Oh, look. Sam and Joe have made a slide on the edge of the pond. Oh. Let's go and join them. <laughs> Come on, young dropsy, follow me. Can you do knocking at the cobbler's door? I'll show you. Watch. Whee! Oh, oh, heavens, Tupman, did you see? <laughs> what? When he went down the slide on one foot oh. and gave a post. <laughs> Let's knock on it with the other. Oh, no, 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 Joe's doing it. Oh, yes. Hello, Joe. Oh, did you see that, Pickwick? I oh. did. It looks a nice warm mix. It, it does indeed. Do Ooh. you slide? No, I, I used to on the gutters when I was a boy. Well, try it now. Oh, no. do please, Mr. Pickwick. I should be very happy to afford you any amusement, my dear, but I haven't done such a thing in 30 years. Well, what does that matter? Simple as winking. Here, oh, Joe, no, I... take my skates. I'll keep you company. Oh. Bravo, sir. Come oh, on, no. Governor. Yeah. Miss Wardle and I will come too, won't oh. we, Miss Wardle? Oh, yes, of course, Mr. Snodgrass. <laughs> you too, Mr. Tupman. Uh, uh, follow me, Pickwick. Oh, uh, <laughs> if you fall, you can fall on me. Oh. <laughs> Don't be scared, sir. Just take a run at it and just slide but, uh, down. Uh, uh, oh! Oh! oh. Oh, well done, old friend. If you can keep your feet less than a yard and a quarter apart, so you'll find it easier. Come on, everybody, keep the pot a boiling. Come along, Mr. Winkle. You can hold my hand and stop me falling. Oh, indeed, I will, Miss Allen. Great sport. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Most enjoyable. Oh, hurry up there. We're catching you up. <laughs> Oh, keep it up, sir, keep it up. You wait your turn, young Twenty Stone. Down with you, sir. That's the way you're getting the speed up. Really, this is most exhilarating. Oh, what's that? Oh, oh, get away, the ice is breaking. Oh, oh. Big Wig. The governor, where is he? Mr. Big Wig. Big Wig, where are you? The governor, he's gone through the ice. Oh. Keep back, everyone. Big Wig, where are you? Oh. There's his hat and gloves, but where is he? Get up and run back to the house. Oh. Give the alarm. Oh, yes, 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 Hi. certainly. Oh, a oh, fire. fire. Oh. Sam, try and reach him with me. It's all right, sir. He's come up. Yeah. We're a coming, yeah. sir. Keep yourself oh, up yeah. just for an instant. Yeah. Only an instant. Yes, do. Let me implore you for my sake. Yeah. Can you feel the bottom there, old fellow? Yes, certainly. I fell on my... I fell on my back. 
I couldn't get to my feet at first. It's oh. only five foot deep oh. there, sir. Now, to be sure, I say it is. Oh. Now, hold on, Pickwick. We'll make a chain and pull you out. Oh, yes. Take my hand, oh, right, like right, Sam. Oh, yes. Hold it round the waist. Oh, sure. oh, you oh, others oh, take oh, hold oh, of oh, Sam's oh, legs oh, and pull. Oh, now, oh, heave! Oh, 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 never, never mind if the ice breaks. Oh, We're oh, getting you to a shallow apart. Oh, 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 it's holding here. Pull, all of you. Oh, oh, he's coming out. Oh, One more heave, does it? Oh, 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 safely oh, landed, sir. Oh, oh. Dear, well, his death of cold. Oh. Let, me, let me wrap the shawl around you. Oh, oh, have mine as well. Dear me. Oh, it was very cold, I must say. Well, the best thing you can do is to trot off home oh. as fast as you can and jump into bed directly. That's yes. right, sir. Take my arm, sir. Oh. And a bowl of hot punch will soon put you right. Hey, big Hey, hey, hey. It's a sure and certain preventive against taking a cold and getting rheumatism. Hot punch? Oh, what a... Capital notion. Oh, yes, oh, come on. <laughs> the jovial party broke up next morning, and Mr. Pickwick and his friends once more took their seats on top of the Muggleton coach. In a different direction, Miss Arabella Allen was also departing, under the care and guardianship of her brother Benjamin and his most intimate and particular friend, Mr. Bob Sawyer. You're away now, are you, Mr. Pickwick? Yes, Mr. Allen, I and my friends are returning to London. Bob and I are going back as soon as we see my sister. Uh, uh, goodbye, then. Goodbye, Mr. Sawyer. Yeah, I thought it might be pleasant if we met again in London. Mm. Could you come and see me? Nothing would give me greater pleasure. Capital! Here's my card. Ah. Lance Street Borough. Not far from Guy's and Handy for me, you know. Uh, I shall find it. Well, come on Thursday fortnight and bring the others with you. Mm. I'm going to have a few medical fellows that night. I shall greatly enjoy meeting other members of your honourable profession, Mr. Sawyer. Everybody on now! Ah, up, sir. Take Thank off you, the sir. Easy. Oh. Oh. Hey. Oh. Oh. Wait for me and me. Hurry along now, uh, gentlemen. Yes. Up with you. Uh, right. Let him go, boy. Mind your head. Oh, oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Allen. Goodbye, Miss Emily. Goodbye. We feel that in this place we lay ourselves open to the inquiry whether Mr. Winkle was whispering during this brief conversation to Arabella Allen, and if so, what he said. Furthermore, whether Mr. Snodgrass was whispering to Emily Wardle, and if so, what he said. To this we reply that whatever they might have said to the ladies, they said nothing at all to Mr. Pickwick or Mr. Tupman for eight and twenty miles, and that they sighed very often, refused ale and brandy, and looked gloomy. If anyone can deduce any satisfactory inferences from these facts, 